Welcome to this tutorial on creating a logo in Serif Draw Plus. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to um, insert some text into um, a, a new logo and how to shape it, how to apply some color. Uh, but we're also going to look at some of the principles behind good logo design. Uh, but before we get started, let's think about our client. So we've been asked to make a logo for a company called Super Splash. Uh, they run a swimming and uh, water games activity center. Uh, they are distinctly family friendly. Uh, so their target audience is parents of children aged between sort of two and 16. And they do things like swimming lessons, uh, swimming parties for kids. They've got slides and all of that kind of stuff that kids love. Um, obviously, because they're, they're attracting um, children, that's part of the target audience, but ultimately it's the parents who are going to drive the children there, who are going to pay for the children to be there. So all of their products needs to appeal both cleverly to the children so that they nag their parents into going, but also to parents so that they are sufficiently informed and they also want to attend Super Splash. So, like I say, they want a new logo. They're going through a rebrand at the moment. They're going to be uh, developing a new website as well and some, some advertising for their company. Uh, so, we're going to start off today with the logo. And uh, we're going to be making a logo that looks a bit like this. So, you can see we've got quite um, a distinctive design there. We've got some curved text uh, and we've got a playful little splash in place of an exclamation mark. Um, before we go on to actually making it then, I just want to talk about some principles of logo design. Um, a few things that you really need to keep in mind as you're making logos. The first thing is to keep your logo very distinctive and recognisable. Instantly, that super splash is using quite definite colours uh, and fonts. It's not too cluttered um, and that would easily stand out um, in various contexts. That's, it's quite strong, it's quite bold. It's relevant. Your logo design must be relevant. If you're going to use shape or incorporate any, uh, any imagery into your logo, it's got to be relevant to the product. So here we've got a um, nice kind of rounded, sort of childish font uh, because our target audience includes kids. And we've got that playful water splash in the exclamation mark, which tells you straight away, again, it reinforces that sense of water. And of course, we've used blue because that is the water colour. Um, speaking of which, then we want to have limited but appropriate on brand colour. When you are creating logos, um, you don't want to use lots and lots of colours. And there's, there's a few reasons. One, it means that putting that logo against a background becomes increasingly more difficult because your logo needs to stand out from the background, it needs to contrast the background. So if you have lots of colours, like a different colour for every letter, then you might find that some letters disappear, uh, are sort of almost camouflaged in the background. Also, uh, when it comes to producing any products or merchandise, it's actually very expensive to use lots of different colours. And if you're going to put this on a t-shirt or on a mug uh, or on a giant poster, then you want to keep your, limit, your colours limited to probably no more than two or three. You also want to ensure that it's not dependent on colour. So if for any reason we had to present this as black on white or white on black, it would still look good, it would still have distinctive shape, um, so it doesn't depend on the colour, but the colour certainly brings attention and energy to the logo. And the final thing you need to realise when you're making logos is that we must make our logos vector-based. Now, very, very briefly, there are two different ways uh, of storing images on computers. One way is called bitmaps, where every single pixel of an image um, is what makes up the actual image overall. So uh, they're like tiny little squares that make up the image. And as you zoom them up and they get bigger and bigger and bigger, you start losing quality and you start seeing the pixels as you start stretching them and making them bigger. By contrast, vector-based images are stored as coordinate values uh, that actually tell the computer or the software that's opening the file how to draw it in real time on the display. The advantage of that is that you can create uh, your logo to any size. It's infinitely scalable. You can make it as big as it, it needs to be to fit on the side of a building or as small as it needs to be to go on a postage stamp. 
and the computer will re-draw um, using relative coordinates the logo uh, in a pure and exact way. Um, other things that you get, other advantages you get over vectors, it tends to be that they're on a transparent background so that you can place them on anywhere, uh, any other design and they'll stand out, they'll look good. But principally it's to do with uh, that ability to make your logo um, so much more versatile. You can, you can stretch it, make it nice and big without it losing quality. Also, uh, people like t-shirt uh, printing companies, mug printing companies, pens, things like that. They like vector-based artwork because again they can layer that into their machining uh, and they can create physical versions of your uh, logo to a much higher quality. So it's very important that we make a vector-based logo. Okay, that is the client's background. This is the logo we're going to be making and we've gone through some of the key principles of logo design. I think we're ready to begin. Okay, so here we are in uh, Serif Draw Plus. Um, we've got no document open yet and it asks us what we would like to do. So we're going to want to start a new drawing. Um, we get several different templates we can choose from, um, but for now I think it's easiest. We'll just choose A4 Portrait. It really uh, won't actually matter at this stage. Okay, so here's our page, and we are ready to start designing our logo. Now, our logo is very text-based, uh, so we want to start off uh, by putting some text onto our page. So, if I click uh, over here, or hover over here, you'll see it says the Artistic Text Tool. Uh, so, we're going to click on that, and click and drag so that we get it quite a decent size. And for my logo, I'm going to be using Super and Splash as two different words so that I can present them differently on the page. So there's super. Now straight off you can probably agree it's not the most inspiring or suitable family friendly font. So if we just select the text, go up to our fonts menu and have a look for a more suitable alternative. Uh, and there are lots of different fonts we could choose from and if you just hover the mouse over you'll get a preview of what it looks like in each of the fonts. Um, the one I quite like for this logo is called uh, VAG rounded BT. So I click on that and there's my first bit of text um, and I will do the same on another one. Super splash and again I'm going to oops, I'm going to select and change the font. Uh, now that I've used uh, VAG rounded it's actually in my recent fonts list right at the top so I can click it and get it nice and quickly. Okay, so here I am, I've got two pieces of text. Um, if I want to move anything on my page, then I need to make sure I've got this little pointer tool selected. And then I can just click and drag and move things around. Um, I can also resize uh, any text by grabbing from the corners. And if I hold shift as I grab, it will keep everything no, sorry, if I don't hold shift, haha, <laughs> if I don't hold shift, it keeps it in proportion. If I do hold shift, then I can start stretching in either dimension, but actually I'd like to keep these in proportion. So we've got super, I might make splash just a bit smaller. Okay, so we're starting off okay. Uh, now I'd like to add some color to these, so I'm going to select them both. I'll click on the first one, hold down shift and click on the second one. And you see that my bounding box has now gone around both. That means both are selected. And from the color wheel, I can click uh, inside this triangle, which affects my sort of um, how light or dark, how saturated my color is. And then I can rotate the wheel by dragging on the outside. And I can choose a different color, so I can get a nice orange color like this. Okay, good. Now, I'd like to put some sort of nice curvature in. I think it would just be a bit more exciting. So what we can do for that is if we go back and select our text, um, if I click back on my text tool, I've got my text selected. You see it says preset text paths and at the moment there's nothing selected. Well this option here says curved text user defined and there are lots of ones I could choose. This one would make it sort of go uh, round in a circle, that one makes it go straight, uh, this would make an upward semicircle and, and so on. Um, I'm going to choose the user defined one because then you get to play around with it as you like. So I click on that and it instantly gives me a curving 
uh, design which I can change. So if I click in here I can move my endpoint and I can click on this little handle I can change the angle of movement there and I, I quite like that, that's okay. I could bring that one round a bit and in a bit and to be honest at this stage it's going to be a bit of experimenting to see what works for you um, but that's quite a good start. I can do the same with Splash so I've got it selected I can choose preset text paths and I can choose a similar shape so that it sort of fits inside my other one. Bring that out a bit. Okay, not bad. Uh, and I can move them around again if I need to or resize them as I want. And I want to put an exclamation mark because that's actually part of the company name. Uh, but rather than a boring old exclamation mark, which I could do, you know, it would look like that, and that's fine. That's pretty cool. But actually, I'd prefer to have a stylistic sort of shape. And there are a number in this shape drop down here in uh, Draw Plus of pre built shapes that you can use. I've got some smiley faces, a little clock, uh, rectangles and circles, very useful. Arrows, also very useful. Um, but there's this nice sort of tear shape, uh, which is perfect for a little splash. So I'm going to grab that shape, click and drag, and it's created my basic shape. Um, at the moment, it has no, no fill colour and it's just a black outline. It's also sort of the wrong way round. So I'm going to make a few changes. If we just click on it again with the pointer tool, we can, just by moving the mouse out along the diagonal, you see it changes to a rotating icon. So I can click and drag and I can rotate my little splash around. And we can start filling it in. So if I click on fill, uh, and I choose a sort of a nice blue colour, like water. And on the uh, line, right, here we go. Um, so there we go, so I've got now a nice little splash. I need a little circle or something here as well as part of the exclamation mark. So I go back to my quick shapes, choose an ellipse, and click and drag. And if I hold shift at this stage, it will lock the aspect so it's a perfect circle. Um, I might just want to move it slightly. And it's picked up the uh, same color settings that I've most recently used. So it's identically matched to my little tear shape. Well, that's looking pretty good. Um, what I can do at this stage is I can still move things around. Every part is independent, and I, so I can reorder, resize. Um, I could change the um, color of one part or the other if I wanted to. Um, but I'm quite happy with what I've got. So what I want to do is I'm going to select uh, all of the shapes by just clicking and dragging a box around them. And it gives me the option to group them, so I'm going to do that. Now I have, wherever I click and drag, they are all together as one item. So all that remains is I need to save my little bit of work uh, and export it in a format that I can use on the web. So first of all, let's just save our project. And we might want to save it as something like Super Splash Logo. Should really have done that earlier, just in case Draw Plus crashed and I lost all my work. Uh, but now that that's saved, um, we need to export it because although I've saved it, I've saved it in the Serif Draw Plus format, I can't use that on the web. Um, I can't send that uh, out to other people's computers and expect them to be able to view it unless they have Draw Plus as well. So what we do is we export into a common web-friendly format that can be um, re that can be redisplayed on other people's computers. To do that, have your uh, group selected by clicking on it. Go to File and Export, and we're going to export as a picture. Uh, and I want to export selected objects. It might say page, in which case you'll see there's an awful lot of transparent, unused space. We don't want that. We want to just have the selected object, uh, just our logo exported. Um, and we get to choose the resolution. If we think we're going to want to print it, you want to get as high a DPI as you can. Uh, if you're going to just show it on a screen, then 
normally 72 or 96 would would be fine but in the in the day of retina displays and uh, better quality images we probably need to go for about 200 dpi and then it'll ask you the format uh, and there are several different formats you can choose from um, you probably are going to choose one of two formats uh, you might choose SVG, which is a vector graphic format which does display in modern web browsers and can be infinitely scaled. And this would be a good format for sending to a printer or a publisher. Uh, however, uh, much more compatible is the PNG format. This is a bitmap format, so you are going to lose um, some of the benefits um, of it being a vector-based image. But it's okay because your source document is still a vector, so you can still resize your original to any size you like. We're just exporting now to be used on a website. So PNG is fine. Make sure the bit depth is at 32 bits. If it's at 24, it doesn't have enough bits to actually uh, encode the transparent background and it'll be on a white background, which will be a real pain when you want to show it on different backgrounds on your website. So if you choose 32 bit, you get the checkerboard back, which tells you this is transparent. Um, once you've got those settings done, you just press export. It will ask you for what you want to call it. It will helpfully use the name you've already chosen for your document, so that's fine. So Super Splash Logo, press Save. Uh, oh, I've already made one before, so let me just uh, let me call it Super Splash New Logo or something like that. Save. And that's now exported my PNG file, and I can show it to you. If I go into my computer, And if I were to load it up, there's my lovely logo, as you can see, on a fully transparent background. Um, it's nice and high quality, and that's ready to be used on any kind of merchandising or on the web. Um, and I think my client would be really happy with that logo.